Today we are gonna go Goodwill shopping and we are also gonna head to Habitat for Humanity because the other day I purchased two amazing vintage tile end tables and I gotta go pick them up before they resell them to somebody else. We're gonna hit the nearby Goodwill and possibly a few more stops. I have no idea where the day is gonna take us, so we're just gonna hit the road and see what happens. I found a single salt shaker. It's got this beautiful inlaid two-toned wood. It's only $2.99. I'm just so bummed that there's not a second one. We're gonna keep looking throughout the store because you never know, sometimes they do put them on different shelves. I picked up four of the champagne glasses. What's kind of funny about these is that if you look at the taller ones in the light, they have kind of an amber glow to them. You can tell they're not true black. But the best part is that the two shorter ones, when you hold them up to the light, I don't know if you can see this, but it has this beautiful amethyst color. And this is called amethyst glass. And the quality on the two shorter ones is definitely a higher quality than the two larger ones. But I'm thinking once I mix these with the wine goblets that I already have at my house in the lighting that I have, they're all just gonna look black. And you're not gonna be able to tell that some of them have that amethyst color to them. I love building collections slowly over time. It just makes me happy to see them grow grow and grow and grow. So this is gonna be great to add these to that collection. I do use these, but I will say, sometimes it's hard to tell how much alcohol or beverage you have inside them because they're black. So there has been a couple times where I've been pouring wine for my sister and I actually overflowed her glass because I didn't see that the wine was at the top of it. I love tea and Japanese pottery, and so I had to get these. There was only a set of two of them, but to be honest, a lot of times when I have tea with a friend like Michelle or my sister, it's just the two of us having tea, and these would look really beautiful mixed into a set with something more neutral too. I am so excited about the Japan trip. Just in case you haven't heard, Jesse, my husband, and I are hosting a group trip to Japan in April of 2024. We are gonna be spending some time in Tokyo Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. We're gonna learn about Japanese tradition and culture and food. And of course, in between those activities, we are gonna be hitting every single thrift store, vintage store, antique store, flea market that we can find. If you've been to Japan before and you'd be willing to share your favorite vintage stores and flea markets, I would be so grateful for any locals who can give me pointers in the right direction. And that trip is gonna be a really special one. We are just doing the one trip to Japan. So if you've always wanted to go to Japan, but you didn't know where to go, what to do, what to see, what to eat, where to stay. We've got you covered. We figured out all of those details. It includes transfers to and from the airport, all transportation, and the majority of the meals. So if you are interested in joining us, we've got a few spots left. You can head to leftcoastrevivals.com, click on the travel tab, and you will see the Japan trip. It's also going to be Jesse's birthday while we're there. So the second night of the trip is his birthday, and we are going to go on a Tokyo night street food tour. I'm so excited for that day in particular. I've already met the majority of the travelers for the Japan trip when I was at the Left Coast Flea. A lot of them are local Portlanders, and so it was really cool to get to meet them in person. And I can already tell you, we've got a great group of people together, and we're going to have an amazing time. So we would love to have you join us.
I really love the kind of mid-century boomerang shape on these black plates. I love when my shopping cart all looks good together. You can see how beautiful these plates would look with the shiny black goblets, the teak wood, and a few patterns mixed in. Can't get them because of the scratches, but I am going to keep an eye out for a set similar to this because I think a fun shape like this would look awesome layered on my plain white square plates. I have a very similar hummingbird feeder to this one. Unfortunately, this one has a major flaw in it, so that's not gonna work. I'm surprised they even put it out on the shelf, to be honest, it's not very functional. I don't know if this is vintage or not. It was only $1.99, so I had to get it either way. It's very Scandinavian looking, and I think that somebody actually painted this aftermarket. The paint job on it is not that great. There's a few drips in the glaze, so I'm pretty sure that this was something that you could purchase to paint kind of DIY yourself. It's definitely not a designer Scandinavian piece, but for $1.99, I could not pass it up. This is gonna look really cute styled up on a bookshelf. I was really excited when I found the second salt and pepper shaker. I honestly thought I wasn't going to, and this is why you always look no matter what. If you find one on an end cap or if you find it in the wood aisle, they could have easily been donated in two boxes, and one employee was thinking it was a salt shaker, and so they were thinking kitchen area, and then the other person was thinking wood, it goes in the wood aisle. So you never know what you're gonna find, so it's always worth double checking all of the aisles. I have a little salt dish that I got in Morocco that has black stripes on it and I think these might actually look really cool mixed with that so I'm gonna try these out at home and see if they work good for me and if they don't for any reason then I will let them go in my next first Friday sale I ended up only paying two dollars and 99 cents each for these here are the salt and pepper shakers in my kitchen this shelf is constantly changing. You've probably seen me decorate this shelf here in our kitchen, I don't know, 50 times already. But these are kind of the staples that are here and always make their way back to this shelf. We have kind of a vertical theme going on in here. You can see we have the vertical hickory here on the cabinets. We've got the vertical tile. And I've been trying to add in some kind of subtle vertical pieces like this beautiful Robert Sperry piece of pottery that many of you might remember from a Goodwill video. I found this for $4.99. It's a designer and it's very valuable. It's worth probably six or seven hundred dollars. One of my best finds last year for sure. I also have this beautiful vintage cutting board that was passed down in the family. And then here are the little salt dishes that I got on our trip to Morocco. I love these because I can easily just take them to the table and I put my special salts in here. So this is actually my favorite flake salt for topping things. I will link this in the description below in case any of you are salt lovers like me. This is my absolute favorite when you just want plain sea salt flakes. They're nice and large. They're amazing. They're so good. I'm thinking that these would work for a fine salt and a fine pepper, but I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit too much of the vertical going on here. Looks a little busy to me. Maybe if I sprinkle these pieces in throughout the kitchen, it will work and balance out a little better. I love these because they're Thomas Toff pottery from Denmark and they're some of my favorite pottery to collect but it kind of does make it a little bit busy as soon as i take away the thomas toff pottery i don't think it's too much with all of the vertical stripes i actually think it looks amazing i can put the thomas toff pottery somewhere else in the kitchen I got this studio pottery for $3.99. This was actually in one of the carts that they had just rolled out. And so I was excited as soon as I spotted that little bit of pottery down in the corner. I was pretty sure, but I wasn't positive until I actually opened it up that it was a French butter dish. I have one of these in marble that I found on one of my road trips in California and I love it. How you use these is you actually take this top lid section and you put your butter in here. So you flip it upside down, 
and you fill it up with butter. And then I pour filtered cold water into this section and you put your little lid back in with your butter. It'll stay stuck up in the top and that keeps your butter from going bad. That way you can have it out so it's nice and soft, but it's not gonna go bad. Typically I use mine for a special butter. I will add some herbs to it and make my own little spread. That way I just have it right there on the counter when I'm cooking or making toast in the morning and I just slap that butter on and I'm ready to go. I'm lactose intolerant, so the majority of the time I use plant-based butters. So it works really great with those two. It doesn't have to be traditional butter. That was pretty good for the first stop. I love the things that I got. It was in a really busy aisle when I picked up the three teak bowls, so I didn't end up filming that because I was kind of getting bumped around a little bit. I try really hard to wait until people leave an aisle before I start filming in it just because of privacy. In this case, nobody left the aisle, so I wasn't able to film the clip of me finding these, but I got three teak bowls for only $1.99. These are nice solid wood and they're going to oil up beautifully. And I'm never scared of a set of three because the next time I go, I might find just the single one and I can pop it into the set. I think I didn't film this one either. So apologies. It was kind of a busy day at Goodwill this morning. This was $1.99. It's a beautiful hand woven basket. And I love when they've got the little lid like this. And this one's even great because it's got the string so you won't lose the lid. There's not a lot you can do with baskets like this. I use them typically just as decor to add some texture and variation when I'm doing a bookshelf or styling, but you could put some dried flowers in this. I have some dried lavender at the studio, so I will pop in a clip of this styled up with some dried flowers in it. Just in case you missed this announcement in my recent episode, I am so excited to share that we are currently doing a soft rollout of the secondhand shopping app niche that I've been working with for a year and a half now. To say I'm excited about this app and its potential would be an understatement. I've been working very closely with a very small team at Niche to help make this app come to life. The main purpose of this app is to bring back communities together in person and to support small businesses, whether it's a secondhand store, a vintage store, or a huge antique mall. This app will help bring shoppers into the door, but also it's going to help shoppers like myself. Now you will not have to spend hours on other social media sites looking for the perfect end tables, like the ones that I'm going to go pick up today. We are in the middle of launching our soft rollout in the cities of Portland, Oregon, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Sacramento, California. We hope to roll out more cities in the near future, but right now we are focusing on onboarding stores in these three cities. So if you live in in Sacramento, Portland, or Las Vegas, you can now start using Niche. You can download it today on your Android or iPhone. We need your help to spread the word. This is a very small business, a grassroots movement. This is not Facebook. We are not some big corporation. We are just a handful of creatives who are very passionate about this. And we really believe in Niche and that it is gonna fill the gap in secondhand shopping and really help support small businesses. I don't know about you, but I want these small businesses around for a long time so I can go through and secondhand shopping at amazing antique malls. Even if you are not in one of the three cities I mentioned, you can still help supporting Niche by liking them on Facebook and Instagram. I'm gonna put their Instagram handle up here and their Facebook link in the description below. So make sure to give them a follow and support them. Talk to your favorite local vintage malls and secondhand stores, tell them about Niche and have them reach out to us so we can start getting them onboarded to use the app as well. And then hopefully you can start shopping Niche in a city near you soon. In the meantime, if you want to learn anything else about Niche, head to leftcoastrevivals.com, click on the Niche tab, and I've got some videos explaining exactly how the app works. I'll keep you posted with more updates on Niche soon. I have to head back to the studio and work on a few hours of editing for another video that I'm working on for you. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take a pause for today and get rocking on my editing. And we're going to probably pick up this episode again tomorrow because I'm hoping to get back out and do more vintage shopping. Hi, today we apparently have lots of sunshine. I am going thrifting at a time that I typically don't go thrifting. It is 4.45 p.m. and I typically thrift more at the beginning of the day and in the morning into the early afternoon. But I just got done with an appointment and I decided let's go thrifting. So we are gonna do some late afternoon, early evening thrifting today. And I'm excited to see if we find better stuff or if we find less stuff. 
Okay, I'm not excited about that possibility, but I'm very curious to see how thrifting in the late afternoon and early evening is. So let's head inside and see what we can find. I ended up putting back the wooden bowl because I didn't realize when I had it in my hand that it had a pretty big crack in it. And since it wasn't a solid wood bowl, it was pieced together and it had the crack, I just decided it wasn't worth it. I did get this beautiful handmade ceramic spoon and it looks like a spoon rest because of the size, but it doesn't kind of have the groove in the center of the spoon that you typically see so that you can rest the actual spoon you're using to cook with. But it's kind of heavy and I don't see this being a functional spoon. I think it's a little bit more decorative. I think it would be really beautiful with a cone incense burning in it, but you know what I'm actually gonna use this for? I have a small wooden spoon that I use to stir in creamer with my coffee in the mornings and even though this doesn't have the little channel I think it's gonna work just fine to put the spoon in it the other thing I thought it'd be kind of cool for if you had room on your counter and you were going for a very eclectic bohemian look you could use this as a salt bowl and you could even put it on a table if you have a little spread and you have some special salt maybe a truffle salt or a rosemary infused salt and you want to just have a giant spoonful that people can take little pinches out of it was only three dollars and 99 cents. I think it's beautiful and I'm glad that I stopped in and I got this. got two things for the upcoming tiki party. I got this wooden frame and this is a newer production. It's nothing fancy. Probably would have cost around $30, $35 brand new in a store. It was $9.99 and it already has this fabric covered on top with a cushion board behind it. At our tiki party, I'm going to be taking pictures and printing out Polaroid pictures for guests to take home with them kind of as a souvenir for the party. And I'm gonna print out some of the pictures from last year's party to put on this. And as we're taking pictures and printing them out, I'm gonna to add to this board. I think it'd be really fun year after year to pull that board out and just kind of have the memories and be like, oh, that's the year you wore that Tiki Party dress. And then I also got this mug. This was $3.99. Wait, let me check. Was that the half off color? Got my receipt. Oh, womp, womp, womp. It was not the half off color and neither was yellow or red and I know blue wasn't it either so it must have been purple I think the half off color was purple today anyways I paid $3.99 for this and I think this is gonna be an awesome addition to the Tiki Party collection now we're gonna hit the road we're gonna head about 10 minutes away to another Goodwill location hopefully we'll do a little bit better
loving this beautiful amber candle holder. It looks like it's hand blown. This would be really pretty to style up in the fall time with this beautiful amber tone to it. It's only $3.99. I'm not familiar with who made this, but I'm gonna do a little bit of research before I sell it. This is why I buy what I love because even if it doesn't turn out to be incredibly valuable, it is beautiful and I'll put it in my own home if I can't sell it. With all the plants that I have in my house and at my studio, I never have enough watering cans. This one is a nice small size, so it will be great for staging and decorating as well. I decided to give it a really good scrubbing and to my shock, a lot of the texture that was on there came right off. So I am not sure if it was even supposed to be on there or if this was just really dirty, which is so gross. But now it has that beautiful antiqued patina to it and I like it even better. Sweet! I collect these mid-century roll-up boxes. They're made out of teak and they were pretty common to have on desktops, but I'm doing something very special that I will show you here in a second with this. This is a really great find at only $4.99. So I probably have around eight or nine of these now that I've been picking up at Goodwills and thrift stores and they're all different shapes and they're all different sizes and I'm really excited because I'm planning to do some kind of an installation in our guest bathroom and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them in kind of a gallery wall style where there are all going to be individual little storage bins. So we'll see. I'm excited to give it a try and you know if it doesn't work out I can always sell them because they are worth 30 or $40 each. So I'm pretty excited to give that a try. We're hoping to get to that project later this winter. These wooden goblets are made out of monkey pod from Waikiki and they are gonna be perfect to add to the tiki party. I already have a larger set of wooden goblets. These will be for people who want just a little bit of a drink. And I never pass up a set, even if there's only a couple of them or even singles because I love to mix and match goblets. But at the same time, check every single aisle because some might've got placed in wood and some might be here in the glass section. This might be a good little storage bin for at the studio, but first we have to do a wheel check because it's gotta have good wheels on it. This one is gonna pass the test. I do my best to buy secondhand and thrifted finds for everything at our office whenever possible. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and going thrifting. I would love to know in the comments below what your favorite find from today was. When you're out thrifting, are you typically excited about something practical that you're gonna use in your house? Or do you get more excited when you find something really valuable that you're gonna be able to flip? Or do you get excited when you find something that's gonna look really beautiful decorated in your home? I would love to hear your comments below. So please comment on which of those things is your favorite and what was your favorite find from today. I will see all of you in a brand new adventure soon.